All right, we're gonna draw the Lewis structure of the bicarbonate ion, that's HCO3 with a minus one charge. You're gonna to have to know that the carbon is the least electronegative atom here, and it can make up to four bonds, so it's gonna be near the center. And you're gonna to have to know that because there's a hydrogen on an oxyanion, carbonate, CO3 two minus, that H is gonna be connected to one of the O's. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, let's count valence electrons. According to the periodic table, hydrogen in the first column brings one electron with it, carbon, in group 14 here brings four valence electrons. I'm gonna add four. We have three oxygens and each oxygen brings one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. And because we have an extra minus one charge on the anion, we have to add an extra electron into the mix. When we add these together, I get 18, 19, 20, 24. That's a good, nice round number. I like that. That's 24 valence electrons. Now how do I like drawing my Lewis structures? I like putting the element that can make the most number of bonds, usually the least electronegative atom, in the center, and I surround it with the other atoms. Now I'm gonna add one extra caveat to that. If you have hydrogen on an oxyanion, that hydrogen's going to be connected to one of the O's. So I'm gonna put the O here, I mean the H here, so that's connected to that O. I'm gonna connect all these with single bonds just to make sure it's one contiguous molecule. That's two, four, six, eight electrons that I've accounted for so far. And I need to complete the octets on all the outer atoms first. Hydrogen is happy with just the two, so that's good to go. These oxygens need full octets. I need eight electrons around each one. So we have eight so far. This is 10, 12. 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, and 24. Okay, that's it. I'm out of valence electrons to deal with. I'm not allowed to put any more electrons down on the paper. But carbon does not have a full octet here. And of all the atoms on the periodic table, carbon and nitrogen and oxygen always follow the octet rule. So. Don't get it confused or twisted. You're going to have to alleviate that somehow. The way you're gonna do it is to take a lone pair from one of the other oxygens and eliminate it and then create a double bond instead. So you've taken those two electrons, they still belong to the oxygen, but now they are shared with that carbon atom. Now that carbon has eight electrons, great. To complete this Lewis structure, because it has a minus charge on it, you need to put it in square brackets and you need to write a little minus one in the corner here. That's just how you do it for ions, all right? Now, if your teacher has covered resonance structures, you're not quite done. Because how would you, dear student, have thought to, rem to move these two electrons on this oxygen and not another two electrons on the other oxygen? The official answer is that it could have come from either. So there's another structure here. What if that oxygen stayed single bonded and that one had have become double bonded? Equally valid. And in fact, if you look at the structure of bicarbonate on an electron microscope, these two bonds, I'm pointing to this pair and then this pair, all those bonds are the same length. Um, they're, about, they're about the same length as other one and a half bonds like you might find in benzene, except it's carbon and oxygen. I'm just trying to emphasize here that these are one and a half bonds and this is a single bond. It's actually longer and weaker than those two are. In any case, you probably have to draw both of these resonance structures. They both go in square brackets. They both have this little minus one written on them and you draw the resonance arrow to show that they are equivalent. They're, well, not equivalent, but they both contribute to the actual structure. The actual structure is not single double, double single. The actual structure is one and a half for all of those. How would you draw that? I don't know. Some teachers might allow you to do dotted lines to show the one and a half, but hey, I'm not your teacher. How am I supposed to know what they accept? Go find out for yourselves. Best of luck to you.